You're listening to a recorded session from Pods Camp 2016 in Austin, Texas, sponsored by WP Engine. Welcome to Fast MVP Development with Pods. Introducing our speaker, Toyin Akamasuro. All right, so uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about um, some of my experience using Pods. I worked on probably four or five projects with Pods, so I'll just give you a brief uh, overview of some of the kind of things you can do with Pods and why you might want to use Pods and show an example. All right, so. Um, How do you pronounce your last name? Akinmusuru. Akinmusuru. Okay. All right. Okay. Slowly. You just got to read all the letters. It's all there. It's not like, you know, a Czech name or something that's got, or Polish. Okay. It's got multiple consonants in a row. All right. So this is B. It's back when I had all black hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a uh, developer uh, in Austin. Um, I worked in a lot of uh, education and e-commerce. Um, as of late, maybe the last 10 years or so, been primarily e-commerce. Um, that's my email if you have something particularly interesting. I only care about interesting projects, um, pretty much. Um, so let me, so I uh, uh, do a fair amount of WordPress, um, not so much regular websites anymore, usually just custom applications. I do a lot of um, Magento and WooCommerce applications. So somebody needs somebody needs something added to their site or there's some particularly tricky section. Those are the kinds of things I work on. Uh, my favorite kind of thing is usually configurators. So uh, if you want to, if you, a classic example is you want to make a laptop or a computer, you pick the hard drive and that kind of thing. Um, but I've done notebooks, purses, backpacks, Jewelry, um, if anybody's from around here, you might know Kendra Scott. So I worked on one or two of their configurators. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I've done inside Magento and WooCommerce. Um, I'm one of the organizers, along with Nick here, um, for the WordPress meetup. And uh, so that's lots of boring background. All right, so let's get to what we're actually talking about today, um, is how to, or at least how we have, in my group, um, start using pods for fast application development. Okay. So uh, here's a scenario. Um, a customer says, hey, we want to try this application out, or we want to try this thing out because we don't want to pay too much for this, or we've calculated the cost over three years, and it's going to be this, and it's kind of expensive. We want to do this. However, we're not sure um, if we want to build a complete application. We just want to sort of test it out. Right, um, and building an application a lot of times is as a good analogy is uh, like baking a cake. You got to get the flour, baking a cake, not with just a Duncan Hines box. So you get the flour, all you get the eggs, you get the cocoa, you get whatever else you want, and you start putting all those things together, and that's what it takes to bake a cake. So when somebody comes to you and says, "Hey, we want to do this whole application," um, there's some sunken cost just to get all the pieces together before you start building it. And sometimes it's prohibitive on cost because you know some of us are not cheap. Um, and some, a lot of times people don't really know what they want until they see it. So you don't want to build something out and they're like, mm -hmm. no, right? Uh, so uh, one of our challenges is coming up with a way of making it really quick to do something so they can see it and tell us no. Because um, it, is, it is easier for someone to adjust something than to sort of pull it out of their mind. And there's a difference between, you know, I don't care how good your mock-ups are, most people, unless you're clicking through it and typing through it, don't really get the feel. The problem is it's time and money to go through all those processes, right? So one of the things we do is we try and do some, we try and build uh, MVP, it's called Minimum Viable Product. So something that will, uh, this is more from a startup space, but for our clients, we try and do something that gives you a general sense of the application. It's not fully fleshed out. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles. It doesn't have all the security checks and all of that. It's just we're trying to get this out the door fast so that you can see it and start giving us feedback. Okay. Now, what a lot of people will do, and if you're in WordPress, you're probably doing PHP development, is you'll probably use a programming framework like Laravel. And Laravel is a great framework and it's very popular. Um, Nowadays, in for application development, it's very powerful. And so, when you, a client comes to you, you say, "Hey, this is what I want to do," you sit with them, you start drawing stuff out. 
come up with a database, you come up with some uh, objects, uh, I'll explain that in a second, you start coming up with part uh, things to say, if I take this piece of data, what do I do with it? And that's what we call a controller. A model is how do I store this data? So the example here we're using is a company directory. So a company directory, um, I've been lots of places. Oh, sorry. So um, the application I'm going to show is sort of a basic company directory. There are lots of places I go, and if I work somewhere, uh, somebody will send me an email, hey, the site is down. Um, so for me, working in e-com, site is down is not good. It means somebody is not making money. Um, depending on the site, it could be hundreds of dollars, it could be thousands of dollars, it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, and sometimes people mean some small section of the site is down or something that is not the main e-com system is down, right? Um, as I mentioned before, I did some work for Kendra Scott, and so every once in a while you get an email and you're looking for, you walk in the building and I'm looking for a Stacy, and there's seven Stacys. What does she look like? Well, in Kendra Scott, Stacy is, oh, she's about five, six and a brunette. That's five Stacys, right? That doesn't help me. So I need the picture to see who these people are. So one of the things we came up with is sort of a, a, a mock of a simple, sure. It's a simple sort of company directory. Thank you. All right. So I want to be able to see somebody's face when I walk in to know which Stacy I'm talking to. All right. Is this better? This is better for me anyway. Um, so this is sort of the kind of steps we go through. And so we say, okay, we're going to design a database. And so here it is. We say, uh, we have employees. Here's a person. I know you can't really see that. They belong in a group, so are they in accounting, are they in design, are they in marketing, et cetera, et cetera, are they in IT? Um, and what location are they? Are they in this store, are they in the corporate headquarters, are they in the warehouse, et cetera, et cetera? And so this is a very, this is a subset of the, of a larger design, but this is what you put together to sort of test this idea out, right? So this shows you a handful of things. It shows you uh, the groups, employees and locations, and it shows you the relationships between them, right? So this is what a developer would do when you start saying, I want these kind of things done, okay? So step one, I'm just going to use groups as an example, and I have some code here. It gives you the name, description, and the like. We have a little extra code. Most of you don't care about this at the moment, but you see we're generating or creating a large set of code just to start saying hello, right? And then we do the same thing for other parts of the application. And this is just for groups, all the stuff, just three or four slides, just for groups. And it'll take weeks or months to get this done. Okay. Now, WordPress is handy because a lot of the things that you need to start up an application, so if you think of forgot password, login, set up your, uh, um, uh, setting up a database, having some basic kind of storage for data, WordPress already does all that, so we don't have to think about those to begin with. Okay. Um, it's also, if you're using something um, like pods, well actually we'll get to that in a second, it also has a visual creator. So if somebody that is not a um, HTML, CSS programmer, or at least they're not a hardcore programmer, can use some tools to drag elements around and start rearranging things the way they want it to be. Um, and it's very easy, uh, as a developer, sometimes you have to go pretty far down the line before you have something visual. Using WordPress makes it very quick to start showing people stuff from a day or two or three days into the process, okay? So um, for these kind of applications, in this case, this um, directory, we don't want it to just say WordPress. We have to think about how we would tweak it to make it look more like the application they're going to want. We want to tweak the templates of the header and footer and make it look a certain way. We want to probably change how the login logout page looks. Uh, when you log in, you don't want to come into the back end of WordPress, you want to go to a special page based on your roles. Um, maybe you can't get into this directory unless you're an employee. So how do you get in, how do you log in, et cetera, okay? Now, the reason why I use pods specifically as opposed to just work, uh, WordPress um, customization is because pods has, it will create database tables. Now, pods can do, there are several different options for using pods, but the one I care about is the one that uh, is nicest for developers, and the nicest one for developers is creating proper database tables. And the reason is because, one, it's a little bit faster, and two, if I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that data in the future, but I still want it as fast as possible, as a developer, I prefer it being in a database table, 
Okay, and Pods is one of the, I think there's one other, but Pods is by far the the best application when it comes to WordPress for convert. Unless you're writing all just in code for creating cu uh, custom database tables inside your WordPress implementation. The other reason is if you're doing something like a SaaS product in the future, um, at least we have been working on SaaS products, so we build an application in Laravel, and after we build the whole application, then we're thinking, oh wait, how do we now make it so that I can support multiple people on this system, right? So you can copy data, you can copy uh, your database, you can copy code, you can do all kinds of ways, but WordPress already has a lot of that architecture built in with using multi-site. So you can write your code the same way, and if you now come to doing something like a SaaS application, the delta for writing code for one person and writing code for a thousand people is very small because WordPress handles most of it. All right. Um, as I have here, uh, I can design what a table or an object should look like, and I can ship it off to another developer, or I, I'm not, I don't have to be a developer and I design what the relationship should look like, if I know some of that, and I can send it off to a developer and say, here, I've already done half of this work for you, you can just start, okay? It's also nice because then I can be in a meeting, sitting in the back of a meeting, and start writing out the things that people want and get a very good sense of the application um, immediately, okay? Um, so the last item here is the reduction of development time. That's the biggest reason we use pods. So it gives us the same kind of um, functionality we will want later when we get to the full application, usually, and sometimes we do the full application on top of Pods app, uh, Pods backend, um, but it gives us that freedom to do it quickly and to still have that full power. Okay, so I'm just showing this to you again, showing this to you again. Sorry, um, and just to see, just pay attention to the groups table here. And so it's got ID, name, description, and then a boolean, which is just a yes/no field. Is this person public? Yes, no field. Can this person update their own data? And then t uh, type we can ignore. And then timestamps is just like when that role was created. So for example, it would mean if somebody creates a new group, it would have the date this group was created on this date. Okay. Uh, deleted at is somebody del or soft delete means somebody deleted this group on this date. That's what it means. Okay. So what we do is we, if you take a so here's what it looks like when you do this in the back of WordPress. And you'd have something in the UI, and if you were here yesterday, you probably saw a lot of this. Um, and you go and you create this pause object. And you sort of walk through it by saying, I want to create a name. And I'm doing underscore name because name is already something that exists. But essentially, everything else is the same. I, tell, I do a lot of the data validation here. So I say, it's a name, and this is a required field. I don't change anything here. I don't change anything here. If I want to get fancy with the REST API for people that know what that is, we can also set that as a configuration, okay? But for each one of these fields, we go and do this just in the back of WordPress, and you can do this in five minutes, 10 minutes, as opposed to the process you have to do here, okay? So this is why this is very attractive, and I can do this and show it to somebody while I'm there. So if I do this and I save, all of a sudden I now have in the back of WordPress lists of groups so I can add the list of groups and I can create the groups here, okay? So you can go in the back of WordPress and you go and say, okay, we think we want this relationship or we, you wanna say accounting is a group, um, purchasing is a group, uh, merchandising is a group, marketing is a group, and what other things we, might, we, might we need to identify a group, okay? Um, let me back up a second. Uh, so that is a pretty high level, and I, they covered a lot of this yesterday, but pretty high level of how you go about creating a object in pods, okay? So what I'm gonna show you next is sort of a, just um, a couple of screenshots of what we're building with pods. This is actually something we're rolling out as a software application. Um, and so we have a login page, uh, see, it does not look, you don't want it to, if, if it's an internal application, it might not matter if it's WordPress or not, but if it's something you're charging a lot of money for, sometimes um, a lot of people think of WordPress as just a blog platform, and if they're ignorant about it, that's fine, but you don't want them to necessarily say, well, why are we doing this thing on blog platform? And if you're doing it as a service that you're charging for, you want to have your own identity, so we have a custom login page, all right? So you can go register just like you would in 
a normal WordPress application, we just sort of spruce it up a little bit. Now, once you first get into this application, you can see my handsome, handsome face, um, you would get something that has the list of uh, employees in that company. And so this would be a set of boxes like this. We're still tweaking the CSS, which is why it looks a little weird. Um, but you see the name, you get information about that person, and you can sort of do a basic search, right? Um, as you can see, we have a custom template here. This is not sort of standard WordPress, but we bought this template from somewhere. Um, so something we added is, you know, view profile, that kind of thing. It's copying a lot of the same kind of behavior WordPress already has, but this we, we sort of repackage it a little bit uh, for other users. All right. Now, when you're, when you're in to look at your data, one of the things we do is we don't show the user WordPress at all. We have custom pages for if you're a regular user, and we also have custom pages for if you're an admin. So you never actually see WordPress. Only developers see WordPress, and we use it to check our work. Okay? But this allows us to create the application as they're expecting it to see it very quickly, and we can be sure of what we're doing, as opposed to each time as a developer you're looking in the database to sort of check your work. Okay? Um, another thing for user management, you can set up passwords and have a strength indicator. That's what the thing is under week um, to tell you if the password is strong enough. You can set, uh, increase or decrease those parameters. So again, remember this is a, a intranet or a directory application. You ask a few questions about the user. Um, and so if I'm an HR person, I want to be able to set what those questions are that I ask about my users or my employees, I should say. And so as an HR person, we have a custom page where you can rearrange these elements. So I can, I can say I don't want first name or bio or whatever, and I can drag and drop them around the page. And I can set stuff that are company fields, which means they're public. Anybody in the company can see it. Private fields means only I and the admins can see it. So for example, your emergency contact, you don't need everybody to have the information about your emergency contact. But if something happens, you want somebody from HR to know what that is. And admin only is stuff that only HR can see that they attach to your account, right? So this gives an HR admin the opportunity to go in, set the uh, fields that they want or don't want. And this is just normal WordPress. We're using uh, site options. Um, site options is, uh, if you're using WordPress normally, it's the same, it's not a plugin, it's just a normal WordPress um, uh, function. It's the same behavior that lets you decide what the color you want to be or for the site, if you want, uh, and most of the options from your plugins are set inside options. And it's in the WP options table, if, in case you're interested. So all these things are set here and they're stored in a normal WordPress storage. Normally we would have to design another table for that. Okay. So this is a very ugly page, um, but this is sort of how we if, generate these fields. So I, yes, this is still MVP, right? Um, and so we do this because then it lets us say, okay, what kind of field is it? Is it a map? Is it a picture? Um, and so we can build this kind of thing and make it pretty quick. And this also lets a user who's slightly more technical, but they can do all this stuff through an interface, and it lets them build this form that fills out this page. Okay, does that make sense? So a, an employee sees this page, an admin sees this page, and an admin can decide what fields are on here by making changes on this page. Okay. So all of this stuff was built with standard WordPress functions with the exception of the handful of pods um, objects. And for us, that was uh, groups and locations. Everything else is standard WordPress. Um, Did you use SQL? We use SQL for the front end pages. Um, but actually, very little SQL. Um, I think we only use it for one thing. It was not absolutely necessary. The, um, and the beauty of pods is if once we do this, we can then just use normal templates, create our templates, and copy in the fields that we need because the pods tables works with normal WordPress. However, if I want to do some kind of interesting reporting, like um, get me data on everybody's emergency contacts, or who has been in and out of the office the most this week. Those are kind of things you do need SQL to write reports on. Right, and that gets a little harder and slower to do in normal WordPress because of the way it stores all that data. Okay. But when it's in the standard table, it becomes easier to do for a developer. Okay. Okay. All right, so um, 
There are other kind of pages we made. So if you've ever seen an archive page in WordPress, an archive page is just a list page of some kind. So a list of articles or a list of authors or something. We have a couple of customized templates that we do uh, that we've used before. So this is an example. I can see some information about my employees. Um, and we can search them. So it gives you, a, but it's essentially, again, still an archive page or a list page in WordPress. It's just UI tweaked a little bit. Um, why am I showing this? Oh, that's right. So one of the things we added, I think it's a nice touch, I just want to highlight it, is the little question mark there. So on the question mark, based on the page you're on, um, if you're confused, this will trigger sort of this page and then you can type in sort of help information based on the page you're on. Um, so all of that is the application we're building. We're going to be rolling out sometime end of, or start of next year. But all of this was done in pods. Now here's why it's important. We've, or why pods use is important. We wrote this application, or very similar application, beginning of the year, two devs, two months, about half time in Laravel. We wrote the exact same application about a month and a half ago, two devs, two weeks, half time. Okay? Um, the part of checking the work, I did in a day. Now, all the making the UI look nice, and making sure all the JavaScript works nicely, that's what took like a week of it. And then the rest is just bugs, we, stuff we had to squash. Um, but we cut our time down by you know, 75% by doing this. Now, a lot of people will say you do this, and then once they approve it, then you now start writing the full application and all of that stuff, right? The beauty of using pods and the beauty of using sort of the, the table structure that pods will generate for you is you don't have to do that. Like once you have this, all you're now doing is polishing it and improving the UI, improving the presentation, right? Uh, you can add more application logic at that point as you, as you need to, but you already have a good running baseline for your application, and now you're just iterating on the performance of it and the behavior of it based on feedback you get from customers. Now, I don't know if that customer would have, I, well, I know for sure that customer would not have paid us to do two months of development sight unseen, but we could show them something in three days, right? It's not good, but we could show them something in three days, and in two weeks they had enough to t test it out. Um, they liked it, we shared it with another, they gave us permission to share with another client of ours, and that's why we're spending more time now um, to sort of polish it up a little bit. So we're designing it now for, you know, it'll be a hosted thing. We're going to be um, giving it to churches and schools and stuff like that. So the same kind of relationship you have for employees and groups now apply to students, parents, teachers, homerooms, et cetera, et cetera. And all of those objects are also being created in pods. Okay. So because we had such a success with this, uh, with a different version of this application months ago, we decided, all right, let's use this more and more, which is why we're doing more pause applications. And so I have here redo, do it fast, or, and then redo it faster, right? Um, which, you know, when you're being paid by the hour, you want to get as much done in that time frame as possible. It makes you more valuable. Hopefully you can charge more, right? and, you, and they still get the same amount of work they want. So one of the things we do is, uh, now that we've written this once or twice, um, well, more than once or twice now, uh, we now have come up with a handful of shortcuts to do it faster. So one of the big ones is just like you use pods to do the data side for building a lot of that up really quickly, because it's WordPress, WordPress has great UI building tools already. We don't have to write it, right? So we use the default WordPress UI building tools because pods works well with WordPress Anybody that knows how to use a, a thing that can drag and drop anything around can drag and drop a basic website and get the look right. And there you have your site design. You then take that generated template and you have to do a little bit of programming work, but very little programming work to tie it in with the pods data. Okay. Um, the admin template interface is the stuff you're seeing that's in blue. We bought something to handle some of that back end stuff. Um, that's something also we could have used the builder for, but I wanted, I'm like to have granular control on that. Um, the standard UI elements, this is the stuff that's also in the back end. When you click that little icon on the top right and it gives you the you know, view your profile, et cetera, et cetera, that's stuff that any application you have on the web is going to have, so we, that we make that as nice as we can. Um, when you go to the login page, that's something that you can customize from application to application. And then certain things that WordPress already has built in. I'm registering for as a user. I forgot my password. Um, send me an email when something changes with this object, right, with this location or this store or 
this person. Those are things that WordPress already has built in. We added a couple of extra things. One of them is statuses. So you can say, is this person in the store or in their office or out of the, out of the office? Are they on vacation? Are they sick? That's a handful of statuses, right? Um, so we put that in different places um, around, along, sorry, around our application. Um, and so because a lot of applications, you can break it into smaller and smaller chunks. And once you've break, broken it down, there are certain elements you can reuse. And that's the thing we're trying to do here. Okay? So here's an example from a slightly different application using the same code base. Um, as you see, we still have the same color scheme. We can tweak the color scheme as necessary. But this is you know, like a $35 template we bought on Theme Forest. I hate to promote Theme Forest because it's not great for WordPress templates, in my opinion. There are a handful of exceptions, um, but it's pretty good for just like you want an easy bake oven version of a HTML page. And so this is really, it's really clean, works pretty well. So this is a context page. So we're using this theme template. You see, it sort of expands out. Um, we did the pages, uh, and that's on. I showed it already. Um, we have our little view profile stuff, and this is you know pretty standard stuff. And so this is what a, the application would look like. Um, this is one example of this application. Caterfox is a catering software we're doing uh, with the same system. Um, and, and so that, that's what this kind of thing looks like. You see on the side, um, and I can actually click through if we have time. Um, you can see user profile. Ignore scaffolds. You can set settings, and all of this gives you the application without somebody ever seeing WordPress. Not that necessarily it's a bad thing, but sometimes it's not a good thing if, uh, based on however much you're looking to charge or value you want to present. Um, uh, and also, you can control all of it. All right, so um, that is it for the core application. Uh, are there questions before I go to the Talk for two or three developers. Yes. Um, so I don't have much of an opinion because I almost never use them. Else of the yeah. So the one my personal favorite is Beaver Builder for two reasons. Um, one is pretty decent to begin with, but you can also write your own. And this is you know again as a developer, um, you can also write your own elements. So for example, there are a couple of carousels out there, but I am very granular in how I want my carousel. I can write my very specific carousel and save it, and then in the future for another project, pull it in mm -hmm. or share it with people. I think that's somewhere they're probably going to improve in the future, having some kind of shopping system. So I say I want to pull this person's carousel. I want to pull this person's image place, uh, image loader. I want to pull this person's template page or uh, profile page and those kind of elements. So I like BeaverPress. I've used BeaverPress, Visual Composer, uh, Thrive. Divi is one of the is pretty popular, okay. um, but Thrive's okay. Um, uh, uh, Thrive is fine if you're not touching the code yourself, um, and it's very powerful. But because I do like the code, touch the code, I want something that doesn't necessarily touch change the code. It all the stuff is in there, and if I tweak it, then it can still adjust to it. And so the, Thrive is coming out with a new version that will make it like the others. And if they have this feature set they have now and they have that other behavior, it will be the best. Yeah. So I mean, Thrive, in my opinion, is, is, pretty out, is pretty above the others on user interface. However, the, the, the best mix right now is Beaver Builder. OK? Illustrator, the Adobe No, none of them do that right now. Okay. Um, so you'd have to do your mock, essentially in Illustrator, Photoshop, or whatever, and you still have to rebuild it. Uh, but I mean, the beauty of all these uh, page builders is there are standard elements, right? So I want to have a giant hero image, or I want to have a carousel, or I want to have the little three blocks. And they already have a lot of that sort of like a nice standing library. You just sort of drag them in. Um, now, it's going to make your site look like everybody else's site, and so you still need to a UI developer to make tweaks and improvements and you know to get something that's really just like sings yeah. you still need somebody to yeah. touch it per, uh, well however you know you can get a good general baseline mm -hmm. okay. um, so it's again like any tool uh, you can shoot yourself um, just as well as being successful so it's, mileage may vary but I do like those and that's so again when we're talking about this at our application what we then do is somebody builds the application from a data side, 
with pods. Somebody builds the application from a UI presentation side with one of these builders, right? And that is two thirds of the application right there. And then there's a lot of glue we still got to put together, but it reduces the stuff we don't have to put together, okay? Um, we're not replacing the hooks, we're just sidestepping it. So I can show you a little bit of code. So if you don't want to see this, just give me two minutes and I'll go through it. All right. Um, so the example we're just talking about, this is what the page hierarchy looks like. The reason I'm doing admin dash groups and admin dash locations instead of slashes is just easier. Um, so what we did is we generated a handful of pages to match these. And so we're just creating standard WordPress pages and we're just doing custom templates that have the code for each of these pages in them, okay? So I just said standard WordPress pages. This is how you build it. So we, yes, so PHP code. So this is an example of that. And make page, this is the English. So for example, let's scroll down to organization chart. So organization chart is the human readable part. The empty, is the what the content would be, which we don't want, and org chart would be the URL part, so or the slug in WordPress parlance, right? And then we have, you know, for people that want to see the slides later, here's the actual code you can just drop in to make it, that you can make as many pages as you want. Um, another thing we do is, I don't want, so WordPress has got subscriber, contributor, author, editor, administrator, right? And so I want roles, depending on who you are, but I don't want it to be WordPress roles. I want to define it. So I want employee, admin, and owner. So owner is the person that does handles billing, and we could have called it billing. But most people are going to be at, uh, employees. So what we do is say, okay, I want the same kind of features an author would have, but we're going to call it employee. I want the same kind of features this would have, and we call it this. So that's why we have clone. So we say, I'm going to copy this other feature or this other uh, role, but we give it a name. Okay, so that's what it does. Just takes one thing we know and we give it a name and we give it its own slug. Okay, so if you look here, you see a line that has about halfway down. Actually, third of the way down has got in array. No, 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 no. No, we're going to skip that. Looks like JavaScript to me. Nope, this is PHP, but a lot of it is very similar um, in structure. I mean. Uh, most programming, you want the structure to look about the same. Oh, I forgot the piece of code that's in here. Uh, so you just clone something, and I can show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and then you put it all in the plugin. You start and stop the plugin um, when you turn on when you turn on the plugin. You turn on this set of features. When you turn off the plugin, you can either unload all those features if you want. Um, and then we have this login page redirect. So what this does is remember we were just talking about when you log in, you don't want people to hit WordPress admin. You want them to go to a particular page based on their role. So in this case, um, if the person is an owner or admin, they go to a page called admin. If the person is an employee, they go to a page called home. If it's none of those, the only one role we have left is the true WordPress admin. Then we take them to home URL, which would take them into WordPress admin. And so it's nice because then we can build a whole site so people go working through it. And then we can still go look in the back end of WordPress. We can go look in the back of WordPress to make sure that all the data is going where it's supposed to, to make sure that they're entering stuff in. And if they see something hinky, we can then still go and check all the data without having to go spelunking through the database. Okay. Um, and that is it. Was that helpful? Anybody want to see code or? All right, so this is, um, again, the example we're talking about with directory. Um, the first one we built in, you know, uh, two months, two devs, half time. So that's 160 hours. And the, and the other one we built in equivalent of a month or an hour, a week, if it was one dev. So 40, about 40 hours, 45 hours. Um, so that, that, makes a, that makes a big difference. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I will. Yeah. All right, cool. Just send us to it and we'll, um, we'll do. Uh, anybody have any other questions, comments, slide remarks? <laughs> yes, sir? Um, what other plugins do you have? All right, so um, this is a very highlight. I was going to do a much more dev intensive version. Um, but so here's what we have. Uh, we actually don't need a Kismet. So most of our custom code is in the directory plugin, and but it's extending other people's plugins, which is just standing on giants, right? 
in this case, this giant. Um, so we use pods. We use uh, alternative cache for pods that lets us store the data a certain way. We use the REST API. So if we do some stuff with JavaScript to go talk to the data, save and push data, um, we do REST API log. It just lets us see what we just entered through the API. Um, and we use Timber. Timber is a special, uh, there, there's a template language called, um, What's it called? Twig, thank you. There's a template language called Twig, and there's several ways of getting it to integrate, but Timber, some guys wrote it and have been up maintaining it. It makes it very easy to drop this system in. And then we, our devs write the same way for Laravel as they do for WordPress because we use Twig in both environments, and so this lets us prep all of that stuff, right? Um, and there are a couple of others that I don't have in this example, um, but it's we're not talking 50 plugins, you know, five, six plugins. Um, on the outside, maybe 10 plugins, you'd want a uh, visual template one, probably. Uh, maybe one or two of those. You might want gravity forms, depending on what you're looking for. Um, yeah, but no more than 10, right? So because we're developers and we're writing a lot of those elements ourselves, um, we don't need as many. But if you, you can do a lot of this without a developer, but not quite all of it. Um, and so if you use the visual UI builder, you use gravity forms, it gets most of the data into the pods elements you want um, to pull the stuff out of the pods elements. Pod has pod pages. There's also regular WordPress pages. There's still a little bit of code, but not a ton of code there. Okay. Any other questions? What I just showed you. So let me show you a really quick example. So this is... Uh, something we're building. That we put the thing I was showing earlier, we prototyped. Um, and so I can go look here. I can edit fields. So let me go add something here. Rewards number. And I save that. Um, one of the things we have. Is this the one? Yeah. So this we're stealing from Laravel. Um, we have sort of a history, so anytime you make a change, um, now you can't necessarily read that, but what it's saying here is that the old data, so this is old, the old data was blank for a certain field, and the new data is one, two, three, four, five. So if you look here, old data for rewards number was empty, new data for a worse number has data. So there's still, you know, some tweaks we need to do to make this look nice, um, but this gives us our sort of baseline. And um, so yeah, that's what we actually show them. We didn't show them um, a lot of stuff in WordPress. Yeah. Um, however, you know, when you're going in, again, when you're looking at a group, you really are just, you created it, and you can go in and operate on it as you need to. Uh, so when you're feeding in formed, uh, data from Gravity Forms or whatever else, is the data I'm expecting to be here actually here? Okay. okay. Anything else? Um, some of it was custom code. So like if they're dragging and dropping stuff, that's custom code. Um, but if they're viewing it, most of that stuff is, um, uh, in this case it was, uh, I don't remember the name of it. We took one of the visual, somebody did one of the visual UI things and we cut and paste a lot of that and just change variables in a handful of places. Okay. So it was, I mean, it, and this is to do the, like the grid page, that took maybe a day, two days, as opposed to a week. So because it's WordPress and WordPress doesn't do that quite nicely, as nice as other application system, we have sort of a general form handling workhorse, right? So we say, I'm pushing data to you from a certain page, and here's what it is. And then I have an action, which if you're familiar with Joomla or something, it says, hey, I'm trying to save this. And so then we have something custom in our plugin that says, if somebody is sending you data, and these, one of the pieces is I'm trying to save this, then do this operation. When you're done with the operation, redirect them to this other page. So we have a giant set of calls um, and it was easier that way than to have on every single custom page having just pasting a, a PHP all over the place. Mm -hmm. So we could keep most of it inside our normal plugin structure, um, and so that's that's why we did it that way.
Now, you can do exactly the same thing or very similar stuff with gravity forms as opposed to writing it. We wrote it because there's, we, we're getting fancier. So like when you do locations uh, in the UI, when you do locations, we add a little code that we then go and check in real time with Google, give you latitude and longitude. Uh, the thing that um, Nick was talking about of hashing an address, so you have, you know, it doesn't matter how many different ways you type it in, it will go and check what's the, what's the USPS ad version of the address. And it takes that USPS version and then hashes it. So that's something we're doing something very similar in this case. Um, so if there are seven locations, there, it knows the difference between, you know, building 123 Easy Street Suite 101 and Suite 102. But if you have building one BLDG, you know, 101 or whatever, it, because it translates it with the USPS one, it knows those two are the same. Um, so that's th that kind of work. We do all that in the back end to talk to the postal service and stuff like that. So some of those things, that's why we have that as part of the plugin. And actually we do two or three pieces of the plugin. We just hide it. Um, other questions? Anything else? All right, thank you very much. Thank you for watching this recording from Pods Camp 2016 in Austin, Texas. As always, you can get help with pods on our website at http pods.io slash forums. You can also get help on our Slack chat at pods.io slash chat. We're inside the hashtag support channel Monday through Friday, Mondays and Fridays all day, and Tuesday through Thursday, the first hour of each day. You can also get help on our wordpress.org support forum at wordpress.org support slash plugin slash pods.